Well, hey, good morning, Preach Church. How we doing out there today? Come on, let's stand and sing. Let's worship today. We got a lot to celebrate. Stairs are found, I know. Blessings overflow. Living water runs free from the mercy seat. There's a joy I know. Deep inside my bones, never end. We could give it up for the Lord better than that. Yes. <laughs> well, we are so excited that you guys are with us here this morning. My name is Lewis. Good morning. My name is Christine Ashley. And if it's your first time here, we just want to say welcome. Can we give just a round of applause for all of our first timers in the house today? If it is your first time today, we would love to meet you. We'd love to connect with you. And we actually have a gift for you. So if it's your first time in the house, you can visit our Connect Hub, which is right outside these doors. Um, you can speak with a member of our guest services team. And we would really just love to get some information in your hands, let you know what is happening here at the Bridge Church and how you can get plugged into what God is doing. Um, so if you want to text the word new here to the number you see on the screen, you can fill out a card also in the seat pocket in front of you. And if you're watching online, we want to say welcome. Let us know where you're watching from, um, and we would love to just connect with you. What are some other ways you can connect here at the church? Yeah, absolutely. So we do have Growth Track, which is a three-week course that we do here at the bridge. Uh, simply, if you guys have been here for quite some time, maybe you guys are new, whatever it may be, but if you guys are wanting to take that next step, uh, whether it be in serving or 
knowing more about the church, why it is that we do, what it is that we do, we simply want to encourage you guys to go to that. And as well, feel free to ask questions, but it's really just whether you guys are, you know, trying to figure out where to serve. That could be in kids, that could be in production, that could be worship, so on and so forth. But the Girl Track is there for that as well. I love that. So here at the Bridge Church, we believe in a heart of generosity. So not even just in the way that we serve, but also in the way that we give. And um, if you are newer to the church or you are just kind of, if you've been here a long time, we um, I'm just going to fill you in really quickly. We have a beautiful partnership with Pastor Linnell in Zambia. Um, a lot of you know we went and visited Zambia this past summer. We're going back again this summer. Um, but in December, we did the Above and Beyond offer. Offering. Most of you will remember, and um, Pastor Linnell, they really needed a shipping container in Zambia on the property to um, help store the food so that we could feed the elderly in the village because they were only getting fed once every like three months. And so we as a church um, gave them $10,000 um, to buy the shipping container. And Y'all, we got a message from Pastor Linnell this last um, couple of weeks. Just, I think it is just so incredible. And this is such a testimony of how God works. Because when we say yes to something, God always has a plan for it. And so when we step in obedience, you just never know what your yes will do. And so I want to share this video with y'all this morning. Hi everyone, this is Lanelle and I am right here at Oak Life Foundation Base Camp in Livingston, Zambia. I just want to say thank you so much for your contribution towards our feeding program for 2024. Because of you, we were able to buy a container and also fill it with groceries and milly meal so that we can feed the hungry and the elderly in our village. What we didn't know is that 2024 would be one of the driest years in Zambian history. Because of that, a lack of maize meal, which is our staple food, makes it very expensive and very difficult to feed these people. But you were obedient in December already. And because of your obedience, God did a miracle in our lives. We are now able to go and buy maize and to feed the people and distribute where other people are not able to do it. When they cannot find food, we are the light at the end of the tunnel. And that's because of you. Literally, your obedience turned into our miracle. So I just want to tell you that you are making a difference and that you are feeding people in Livingston, Zambia. We give God all the glory and I just want to say we appreciate you and we love you. And even though you are far away, you are making a huge difference. God bless you. So what is so beautiful about that is literally, sometimes we will never know what life will be changed through just obedience in the Lord, whether through serving, whether through praying for someone or through tithes and offerings. And I just love how she said, because of your obedience in December, the Lord already knew that there would be a, a drought, a severe drought in Zambia. But God put it on our hearts in December because he's the one who knows what's coming. And so praise God. Praise God for all things. And so may this be a reminder to you that your generosity makes a difference. And so if you would like to continue to partner with us through generosity, through your tithes and offerings, we have three ways you can continue to do that, or maybe even for the first time. Our silver drop boxes are around the room. You can text any amount to the number that you see on the screen, or you can give online. It is safe and secure. But y'all, that just fills my heart with so much joy and gladness, and I cannot wait to see what God is going to continue to do. Yeah, we also have a lot of more interesting stuff. And the last one would be for now is we have beach baptisms coming up, y'all. <laughs> yeah, so we are super excited about it. The Lord has really been showing up and doing a lot within the Bridge Church. And um, again, for those of you who are new to beach baptisms, this isn't you guys accepting Christ. This is if you guys have already done so. This is simply going public with your faith, declaring to the world that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. So again, we're gonna do that at the Anna Maria 
Beach at Bayfront at 5 p.m. There will be food. There'll be a few hangouts for community opportunities as well to maybe do some games, so on and so forth. So, yeah, it'll be super fun. Awesome. And you can sign up for beach baptisms in the Connect Room or online. We can't wait to see you all to celebrate all that God is doing in life change. Okay, y'all stand up. It is Master's Weekend. Okay, so you're going to tell your neighbor, because this is food they eat at the Masters, egg salad or pimento cheese? Which one are you?
your hidden glory in creation now revealed in you our christ what a beautiful name it is what a beautiful name as we pray. Father God, we thank you for a new day. We thank you that we have the opportunity just to stand and worship you this morning. 
And part of the beauty of that is no matter what we've carried into today, no matter what we woke up with on our heart, whether it be joyful or a struggle, whether it be something to give praise for or a stress that we are burdened with, Lord, we put it all before you, knowing that you are faithful to hear us, to meet with us, and to lead us forward. And so, Lord, we lift up everyone else meeting this morning, that not just in the Bridge Church and not just in this home and not just for those watching online, but we pray for those meeting down the road at West Church, Lord God, and Pastor Brian, that you would bless their time. We pray for Happy Gospel Church and Pastor Bill, that you would bless their time this morning. We pray for Church of Vieira on the other coast and Family Church of Stewart, that you would bless their time this morning. We pray for Honor Church in Orlando and Vibrant Church in Tampa. That, Lord God, you would meet with them this morning and that the same that we ask for here would be asked for there. And that that is that your Holy Spirit would show up. Nay, that's not even the right way to say it because he is here. But that we would experience your Holy Spirit by keeping our eyes and our hearts open to your presence. That the burdens that we carry would be laid at your cross this morning. That the joys that we've experienced would be given up to you as praise and worship. And that you would speak clearly to our hearts this morning as we continue to just ask the question, why am I here? What's the purpose of my life? What's the purpose of this season of my life? What is it you're calling me to do? Father, I pray that we would hear you clearly this morning. That you'd remove distractions and any barriers and walls that might prevent us from hearing your voice clearly. Whether we're in the room physically or we're watching online, you are still just as present. We thank you for your presence. Lord, we love you, we praise you. And it's your son's holy name, the church says, amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand this morning again. He's already moving. Well, happy Sunday. So good to see everybody this morning. If we haven't met, I'm Lucas Ashley. I'm one of the pastors here at The Bridge. And this morning, we're going to continue on our journey of discovering your purpose. Um, So if you have your Bible, if you don't, there's one in the seat in front of you, or you can look on the screen. But go and open up to the book of Jeremiah in the Old Testament. The book of Jeremiah is where we're going to sit this morning as we continue to discover what purpose is. And the good thing about this journey is we looked at it a little last week as a recap. The question of why. Why am I here? What am I here for? Why am I in this season? What is God wanting of me and for me? And what is he wanting to see through my life? All of these questions that we've all asked at some point in season of our life really all associate with the question, what is my purpose? And what we discovered last week is kind of the baseline is that there is only one place to look in order to actually discover your true purpose, and that's God. That your true purpose is only and always discovered through God, and the reason being because he is our creator. And the only one who has the authority to decide purpose is the one who created the thing. We can choose whether or not we listen to it, whether or not we walk in it, but we can't choose what our actual purpose is. It is given by God. And so once we know where to look, we can begin the journey of actually trying to discover our specific purpose. And it doesn't matter what season of life you're in, if you are young or more seasoned, whatever it might look like, I was reminded a couple weeks ago that you are never too old or too young to learn something new. Amen? But I'm going to be honest with you. I learned this in a way that I'm not ready for. Like, I thought I had a few more years before I got to this point. I realized that over the next, last couple of weeks, I have at some point in time hit the age in which my children are now teaching me technology. <laughs> I didn't think I was there yet. And I'm not going to lie to you. When they taught me technology, I may have lied and told them I already knew how to do that while I was secretly taking notes in my head. Because I'm not ready for that point yet. I like to believe that I know enough and that I know what I'm doing with the phone that I've had for like five years. But a lot of times that's us. God, I know what I'm doing with the life I've had for 40 years. 
I know what I'm doing with the life I've had for 46 years or the life I've had for 30 years plus 20, but I'm not counting the plus 20. You know what I'm talking about? Like, God, I know what I'm doing with this life. And so because we think that way, we're often closed off to remember and realize that we may not exactly know what we've been doing with our life. Or we may not be willing to realize that what we've been doing is not what we should have been doing. Because we have to remember that God does have a purpose for us. Ephesians 2 verse 10, Paul reminds us that we are God's masterpiece. Meaning we are his workmanship, the prize of his creation. We are the only thing created by his hand and in his image. Everything else was spoken into existence. But when it came to man, God took the dust of the earth and shaped him. And when it came to Eve, he pulled part of man out of his body and began to shape Eve still in the image of God. We are God's masterpiece, and he has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things he has planned for us long ago. Church, we are here for a reason, and that reason is determined by our creator. And as we learn to look to him for our purpose, we learn a lot about ourselves, we learn a lot about him. And so this morning, I don't usually title my messages, they're just kind of what they are, but if we're going to title it, this morning would be Your Purpose and God's Promises. Your Purpose and God's Promises. What are the promises that God gives to help you discover and walk in your purpose? In order to kind of understand that, we're going to look at the story of a young prophet named Jeremiah. Jeremiah was about anywhere between 16 to 24 years old when God first called him to be a prophet. And, and, and I need you to remember something. When we read the Bible, specifically the Old Testament, we're not reading our story. We're reading God's story pertaining to someone else. But because we worship the same God, it pertains to us too. And the reason I say that is because the mistake I don't want you to make is to read Jeremiah's story and say, that's me. It's not you. It's Jeremiah. You're not called the exact same way Jeremiah is called. And I know that because you weren't alive 4,000 years ago or so. This is his story of his calling. But because it's the same God, there are promises that we see him give Jeremiah concerning his purpose that apply to us today. And that's what I want us to look at. And so we're going to start in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4. Begins by saying, the Lord gave me this message. This is Jeremiah writing, thinking back upon this moment. And he says, the Lord gave me this message. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were even born, I set you apart. And appointed you as my prophet to the nation. I can assure you there are jobs that people don't want. That is one of them, okay? Because <laughs> the idea of the prophet is that it was a man or woman sent to a community with a very specific message from God to that community. In the Old Testament, nine times out of ten, the message was, you're disobeying God. You about to get right or something bad's going to happen, <laughs> I promise you they weren't the most popular people in the community most of the time. This is the call Jeremiah is given. And the first promise that we see applied to Jeremiah that applies to you and I, we actually looked at last week, and it's the promise that God has a unique purpose for you. God has a unique and individual purpose for your life. For Jeremiah, it was to step into the community at this time for this season in order to be a prophet to speak God's message as a warning, beckoning the people to come back to him. That was his very unique purpose. What is ours? Whatever it is, we, we remember a couple things. First, your unique purpose will bring glory to God when you walk in it. We looked at this again last week. While we each have a very unique and individual purpose like Jeremiah did, we're, we're all unified by one main purpose. 
And that is the reality that everything created by God has the single unifying purpose of glorifying God with their life and enjoying life through God. You and I all carry that singular unifying purpose that everything we are to do in life, Paul says, whether you eat or drink, let it all give glory to God. Remember that everything in Scripture and everything in life is about God's goodness, which means everything is meant to give glory to God. This is the reality. This is how we should read the Bible, just so you know. If you've ever struggled with how to read the Bible, you read it looking for God, not you. It's not even about discovering the characters. When you read the creation story, it's not about Adam and Eve. It's about God's goodness and power as he creates. When we read the story of Moses, it's not about Moses rising up to be a hero. It's about God's power and goodness working through Moses to lead a nation out of slavery. Even when we read the story in Goliath, it's not about David's bravery facing the giants in his life. It's about the power of God showing up in David's life and providing victory for him. Everything in our life and everything through Scripture should and does point to the goodness of God. So remember that your unique purpose will give glory to God, and your unique purpose will also be tied to God's desire for the world. This is what we see very simply in Jeremiah. Jeremiah's purpose was to help bring God's people back to God. That was the purpose of Jeremiah. It wasn't to offend anybody. It wasn't to ruffle feathers. It wasn't to stick it to the establishment. His purpose was aligned with God's heart for his people, which was to bring them back into community with God. The whole purpose of Jeremiah taking the message to the people of God is because they were not walking with God. This was generations of people choosing to worship false gods, choosing to believe wicked and false teachings. And king after king, passed down from generation to generation, you had a lineage of people walking away from God. And then in this specific and unique season, you have two men joined together, a child king and a young prophet. You have King Josiah who becomes king at age eight. You think you weren't ready when you became an adult? <laughs> Try to be giving the kingdom of God's people when they've been living like fools for two decades at age eight. And then about age 26 or so is when Jeremiah is now called to be a prophet. And you have these two young men whose purpose is in line with God's desire for his people. And so Josiah as the king is trying to bring the truth of God back into the main teachings of the community. And Jeremiah the prophet is the one speaking the message, telling them we must come back to God. Understand that that concept of God constantly trying to bring people back to him is the entire story of the Old Testament. It is the story of God's people walking away and God doing everything he can to show grace and mercy to bring them back. In all reality, that's the story of the New Testament. That's why Jesus came. God in the image and likeness of man through his son came in order to live, die, and be resurrected to bring us back to God. In reality, that's not just the gospel story, it's the New Testament story, and it's still our generation's story today. It's your story. It's my story. It's the story of a people who walk away from God and God's desire to get them back, to bring them back to him. That is the purpose, and that is the measure of God's heart. And understand this, that if God gives you a purpose, it will be in line with that. In other words, throughout your purpose, Remember 1 Timothy 2, 4, it says that God is a God who wants everyone to be saved and understand the truth. God's heart is that every person alive would at some point come to know him as their Lord and Savior. And the reason we are given a purpose that aligns with that is because God partners with us to share that message. 
So when we come to know him as our Lord and Savior, he gives us a testimony, a story of how his power works to transform a life. So that when we go share that testimony and story at whatever job or in whatever community you live, then people might just turn back to God as well. Whatever your unique purpose is, and you have one, it will be tied to God's plan. And it will be tied to God's heart for people. If you don't believe me or if you're confused about it, answer this question for yourself. Who helped you encounter God? Who in your life helped you encounter God? While I don't know their name and will never know anything about them, I can promise you this. Whoever it was, it was a man or a woman who was living their purpose to glorify God and help bring people back to him. Because we all share that. Every one of our unique purposes will be in line and connected and tightly interwoven with God's heart to bring mankind back to him. Which means if we're going to walk in our purpose, we walk in love, we walk in grace, we walk in mercy, because this is the fingerprint of God that is needed in our community. But to be a little more specific, not just to, does it, do we see in the story of Jeremiah that God has a purpose for you. We see, secondly, that God will equip you for the purpose. Whatever it might be, God will equip you for it. God is not a God who wants to set you up for failure. And so the second truth, the second promise that we see of God is that he will equip you for your purpose. We see this in Jeremiah. We see how God is going to prepare him. In Jeremiah 1, 6 through 10, he's continuing to look back. He says, oh, sovereign Lord, I said, I can't speak for you. I'm too young. The Lord replied, don't say I'm too young, for you must go wherever I send you and say whatever I tell you. And don't be afraid of the people. So he's not the only one afraid of people, okay? So if you are afraid of people, it's okay. You're not alone, all right? He says, don't be afraid of the people, for I will be with you and I will protect you. I, the Lord, have spoken. Then the Lord reached out and touched my mouth and said, look, I have put my words in your mouth. Today I appoint you to stand up against nations and kingdoms. Some you must uproot and tear down, destroy and overthrow. Others you must build up and plant. Understand that whatever your unique purpose is, God will equip you for it. You ever been set up for failure by somebody else? Like anybody ever given you a task or a job or responsibility? but no teaching or understanding of how to actually do it. I remember when we were student pastors, one of the things that we would do every year is we would take a group of our students on like a local mission trip. Essentially, we would take them for a week and we'd pull them out of their normal routine and we would take them somewhere within the state of Texas to just go serve people for a week. And one of those trips, we were at a children's home in East Texas and we had, we had three teams doing different things. One team was building um, a gaga ball pit. It's a game. And another team was cleaning out of a house and painting a home. And then we had another team that was doing landscaping and yard work. And so obviously I can't be in three places at once, but if I was going to be anywhere, it was around the power tools and sharp objects like saws to make sure that no kids came home without a limb, Right. And so I, I put them there, and then I run around to these other locations to make sure everybody has what they have. And so the cleaning crews got cleaning supplies and paint, right? And then the landscaping crews got the lawn mowers, the weed eaters, the edgers, the blowers, the bags, the rakes, the everything. And then the other teens have the tools that they're not allowed to touch, right? And so I get everyone set up, and then I come over, and we're, I'm, I'm just getting everything cut so that they can start to assemble it. And I say, you know what, I need to go check on this other team. And it had been about an hour. And I go check on the landscaping team. And I show up and the grass is still long. The shrubs are still a mess, like some of your hair in the morning. Like everything just looks a hot mess. I don't have it, Ed, so <laughs> my hair is always perfect, okay? <laughs> I remember walking up. And like as a parent, you ever have that moment? 
It's like you walk up and you see what you fear, and so you start to decide how much of a jerk am I about to be, right? Like, what volume am I going to yell? Like, what seriousness is going to happen? Am I going to let them explain it, or am I going to assume? So I chose to not let them explain it, and so I walk up just with the thought of, what have you been doing? Like, we're here for a reason, And as as I have my adult moment and just kind of lay into them, finally one of them looks at me and says, Luke, we don't know how to start them. (laughs) I was taught how to use the tools given to me to do the job. I was taught how to start a lawnmower. I was taught how to work a weed eater and an edger. I was taught how to use a rake, which I would think is self-explanatory, but apparently not. I was taught how to do these things. And the tools were given to me, and I was able to do a job. But what I realized is that they hadn't been set up for success. I told them what to do, but no one taught them how to do it. Thankfully, God is a better father than I was a leader. God will not give you a purpose and a calling without equipping you for it and teaching you how to do it. He's not just going to give you the tools. He's going to take the time to show you how to use them. He's going to take the time to help you understand how do you speak in grace? How do you teach in truth? How do you serve with humility? How do you heal? How do you pray? He's going to walk you through how to use the things he's given you in order to fulfill the purpose he's called you to. And this is what he does with Jeremiah. Because immediately, as soon as Jeremiah receives his purpose, he begins to argue it. It sounds like Moses, right? You're going to go speak to the people. I can't speak to them. I'm too young. Listen, When God speaks your purpose, stop placing limits when he's trying to reveal what you're supposed to do. If God says go, we don't tell him why we can't. Because if he's saying go, he's already making the way possible. But as soon as he tells Jeremiah go, the first thing is I can't. I'm too young. They won't listen to me. God says don't say you're too young. Don't don't say you're too young. You're not too young. You have to go. This is your job. And by the way, don't be afraid of them. Here's what I love about that. Jeremiah voices a fear. And God settles it. But then God also calls out a fear Jeremiah hadn't voiced yet. He told him he was too young to speak. He didn't say he was afraid of them. He spoke a lack of confidence, not a fear of people. Here's the beautiful thing about God is when he calls you to your purpose, he already knows what you need, what your hesitation will be, and he's already providing assurance and provisions to move past it. So even though you might voice one, he already knows the other reason. I don't have the time. I don't have the resources. I'm too young. I'm too old. I can't speak well. No one would listen to me. My past is too filthy. I can't come back from that. I promise you, whatever you are thinking to lean on as the reason why you cannot walk in the purpose God's going to reveal to you, he's already working to make a way through it. This moment Jeremiah's doing this, And so what does God actually do? Verse 9, then the Lord reached out and touched my mouth. Church, what in our life do we need God to touch today in order to change? What do we need God to touch in order to see transformed? Is it our marriage? Is it our pride? Is it that battle with, with sin or with lust or with arrogance? Is it fear? Is it our feet, which are too afraid to walk forward when God tells us to go? What is it that we need God in our life to touch so that we can follow and walk in his purpose? Jeremiah says, I can't speak. So God touches his mouth. He gives Jeremiah the words and the boldness to walk and fulfill the purpose he's been given. I promise you this. God will equip you if he calls you. 
God will equip you if he calls you. And he will equip you in the right way. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 7. The next two weeks, we're actually going to look deeper at this passage and get an understanding of the ways that God is going to and is equipping you for your purpose. Paul is writing to the church, helping them understand that they have been given what is needed. And so he says this, starting in verse 4, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit is the source of them all. The same God is the source of everything you receive and everything that you need in order to walk in the purpose for which he's called you. Paul says there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit and the same is the same source of them all. Verse 5, there are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it is the same God who does the work in all of us. And he goes on to list the gifts. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. Remember, our purpose will be tied to God's heart for people. And so whatever gifts you are given, they are given in order to help people to serve people, to love people, to draw people back to God. To one person, the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. To another, the same Spirit gives the message of special knowledge or revelation. The same Spirit gives great faith to another. And to someone else, the the one Spirit, the same Spirit, gives the gift of healing. He gives one person the power to perform miracles and another the ability to prophesy. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the Spirit of God or another. Still another person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages while another is given the ability to interpret what is being said. This is the most important part, verse 11. It is the one and only Spirit who distributes them all. God will equip you for the purpose he gives you. If he calls you, there is no reason to be afraid or fearful. He will equip you for everything he's calling you to do. The next two weeks we're going to spend looking at those gifts. What are the spiritual gifts that God gives in order to equip us to fulfill our purpose? But in the midst of all of this, I understand there still might be fear. There still might be trepidation, hesitation. And so the third and final promise we see given to Jeremiah that applies to us today is that not just does God have a a purpose for you, and not not only will God equip you for it, but God will be with you through it all. God will be with you on your journey to discover your purpose, and God will be with you on your journey to walk in that same purpose. Again, God is not a God who wants you to fail. He is a God of clarity and a God of purpose, a God of hope, and a God with a helpful and merciful hand. You ever taught a kid to ride a bike? Anybody? That's why I'm bald, okay? Like, anybody been through that process? It's a fun process, but it's a challenging one, too. Because let's be honest, in the midst of teaching a child to bike, we have all lied through our teeth. Right? And you all know the lie because it's all the same lie. I'll be right here. I'm going to hold on. And then they look back and they're 100 feet away and you're standing there smiling and they immediately freak out and go into the bushes. Right? Like, we've all been in that moment. I promise you I'm not going to leave you. See ya. And they just go. Again, thank God he is a better father than I. Because he stays. He will clarify your purpose. He will equip you for your purpose. And then he will stay with you through every step of the journey. This is what we see with Jeremiah. In verses 11 through 13, Jeremiah chapter 1, he says... Then the Lord said to me, look, what do you see? I replied, I see a branch from an almond tree. And the Lord said, that's right, and it means I am watching. And I will certainly carry out my plans. Understand that God will be with you as you discover your purpose. It is the spirit who calls you to God. 
And it is the Spirit who reveals the things of God to your heart. As you take the journey, God will be with you to help you discover your unique purpose in life and in the season. Because it doesn't matter from birth to death, you are here for a purpose. He says, even before you breathe air, as a human being in your mother's womb, I've already called you out. And I already have something for you. And that is the beauty of God's heart. He will be with you as you discover your purpose. He says to Jeremiah, look, what do you see? He's taking him on a journey of discovery in this moment. And for some of you, that's what God is saying this morning. He's, look, what do you see? What does what, what your heart beat for? Because whatever your heart beats for, whatever your heart breaks for, your purpose has, most likely has something to do with that. And every time I see the homeless, my heart breaks. Then maybe it's breaking for a reason. And when I walk by a kid's area, my heart gets so joyful and happy because I know kids are being taken care of, then maybe that's where God's calling you. Man, my heart just beats when I hear worship music and, and I just love to break out in song. And maybe I, when I see people hurting and broken, I want to help them be healed and find hope. Whatever your heart breaks for is likely pointing you towards your purpose. And so God says, look, what do you see? What what, what are you good at? What are you gifted in? What does your heart lean towards? Because whatever it is, look, I'm with you, and I'm going to reveal it to you. But it's not just the journey of discovering our purpose that God stays with us. It's while we walk through our purpose as well. In verses 17 through 19, Jeremiah continues, and God tells him, get up. And prepare for action. Go out and tell them everything I tell you to say. Don't be afraid of them. There's that assurance again. Or I will make you look foolish in front of them. We'll get to that one another day. (laughs) For see, today I have made you strong. Like a fortified city that cannot be captured, like an iron pillar or a bronze wall, you will stand against the whole land, the kings, officials, priests, and people of Judah. They will fight you, but they will fall. They will fail, for I am with you, and I will take care of you. I, the Lord, have spoken. God will be with you through it all as you discover your purpose And as you walk in your purpose, look at the verbs used. Get up, go, speak, fight. He's calling action into Jeremiah's life. And he says, as you do, it's like you're going to get fought against. There's going to be pushback. Someone's going to try to tell you that's not your purpose. That's not what you're supposed to do. That's not what you're good at. You can't do that because you're old or young. You can't do that because you're male or female. You can't do that because your past is too broken. You can't do that because you don't look like us, talk like us, vote like us. But it's not about what man says. It's about what God says in your heart. Because when God speaks and with courage and confidence we walk in it, we are not the ones who will fall or fail. It is the opposition that tries to stop us from walking in our purpose. That is God's promise. That you and I have a unique purpose. That he's going to equip us so that we can fulfill it. And that through every step of the journey he will be with us. This is a call given all the way back to the disciples, right before Jesus ascends back to heaven after his death, his resurrection in Matthew 28. It says in verse 18, Jesus came and told the disciples, I have been given authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, because I, he's been given authority, because we are connected to him through the Holy Spirit, therefore, go And make disciples of all nations, not just the people who look like you, talk like you, think like you. He says, go and make disciples of all nations, 
baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey the commands I've given you. And be sure of this. I am with you even to the end of the age. God's promises are what make our purpose possible. Because you have one. It's the most important thing. You do have a specific, unique purpose for your life today. And because God's the God who gave it to you, God wants you to know it. And when he reveals it, he doesn't send you off to fail and figure it out on your own. He will equip you for every moment of it. It may take time. Did you know Paul vanished for about three years before he came back and did all the work that we see throughout the New Testament? Some of us don't want to wait three days. For three years he studied, he prayed, he sat with the Lord, and the Lord, through his only resource, taught him, revealed to him, encouraged, uplifted, and equipped him for his purpose to take the gospel forward. He has promised to equip you and to stay with you through every step of the way. God has a unique purpose for our life and he wants to reveal it, but we have to be ready to see it. The thing that is required for us to really see and understand what God has for us is one word. It's trust. It's trust because through trust we surrender. If I trust you, then I will give this over to you. If I trust you, then I'll listen to your word and I'll take a step, even if the step doesn't make sense. I'll trust you, and if you're telling me to give $100 and I only have $100, I'm going to give $100 because I trust you. If, if you tell me to speak and I don't feel like I have the words, I'm going to trust you. If you tell me to serve and I don't feel like I have the ability, if you tell me to lead and I don't feel like I have the, the equipping, if you call me to do something, I'm going to do it because I trust you. So this morning as we close, it's really two things to think through. The first is just simple, the question, do you know your purpose? Do you know why God has you in your home, in this town, in this community, in this day? Do you know the purpose in which God has placed you here and kept breath in your lungs? If not, trust him. Trust that he has something for you. Trust that he wants you to know it. And trust that whatever it is and however crazy it sounds, he will equip you for it and he will not leave you alone through it. But trust him enough this morning to say, God, whatever it is, I'm listening, speak. And I promise you, because it's what happened in my life, we see it tested through scripture. When you say, God, I'm willing, and your heart is willing and ready, he will speak. If you know your purpose, the question you sit with this morning is, are you walking in it? Or are you sitting down saying, I can't speak, I'm too young. I can't go, I'm too old. I can't give, I'm too broke. I can't impact, I'm too broken. I can't heal, I'm too hurt. Are you walking in the purpose God's given you? If not, the answer's the same. It's trust. It's surrendering whatever the hesitation is, whatever the fear is. It's your life and then everything in between. And it's trusting it with God. Knowing and believing that if I trust it with him, he will handle it. So this morning, I'm, I'm going to ask you to stand. And, and we're going to enter this through to a moment in time of worship. And at this time, the, the, 
if you just want to spend some time worshiping, you can worship. If you're wrestling with one of those two questions and you, you want to come down and pray, you can come down and pray. You can pray where you're seated, seated too. For me, I have to move. So for some of you, coming down and kneeling before God at the altar is, is the step that he calls you to take. Some it's praying where you are. Some it's just worshiping and sitting. But it's asking the question, do I know my purpose? If not, trust God enough to ask him. And if I know it, am I walking in my purpose? And if not, trust God enough to lead you forward in it. Because while I don't know your specific purpose, I know our God. And I know that he has a purpose for you. He wants you to know it. He will equip you for it. And he will stay with you through the entire journey. Father, we praise you and we love you. And I ask, Lord, now in this place that as we just worship you for a moment, that our hearts would be open to hear from you. For those who are struggling to know their unique purpose, that they would be trusting enough to just ask this morning, God, here I am, whatever it is, I'm trusting you. And I trust that what you have for me is better than what I have for myself. And so I'm asking that you would reveal your purpose for my life. And for those who have been wrestling with the answer, and in your heart you know it, but you're just not walking in it, May this moment of time and worship just lead you to say, God, I'm sorry. I trust you with the fear that's holding me back. I trust you with the fear of judgment if I step forward and say I'm ready to lead, I'm ready to serve, I'm ready to make a difference. I trust you with whatever is my hesitation. I trust you with whatever is my reservation. I trust you with whatever is preventing me from fully stepping into the purpose that you've made clear for my life. The Holy Spirit, I pray in this moment that you would just speak clearly to the hearts of everyone in the room and those watching online as they seek you and trust you. Lord, we love you and we worship you. Let your glory fall down. Let your glory. 
read a verse over us to close this morning, but please know if there's anything we can do to help partner with you in this journey, as you learn to discover your purpose and discover the ways in which God is going to, to provide and the opportunities he's going to provide for you to walk in it. I understand that's why we do what we call growth track. Part of that journey is helping discover the gifts in which God's given you and understand, like people sometimes ask the question, like, well, if I discover my purpose, do I only have to fulfill it like here? Like, do I have to be on the dream team to fulfill my purpose? No. Uh, our job as a church is to equip and provide opportunities. And so as we work to help equip you the understanding and discovering the purpose God has for you, part of that is that we provide opportunities to walk in it. And that could be through our dream team, through our outreach, through missions, those who are going to Africa with us this summer, walking in that way but please keep walking in it outside of the walls <laughs> I would say that's the more important place it is important in here and as we uplift and encourage the body and meet those who come in but but please don't stop walking in it when you leave the space we don't this is just another opportunity to so if we can be praying for you in that journey 
You can actually text the word pray to a number on the screen if there's any way we can join you in that. There's prayer cards in the seats or our, our prayer team will actually be down front after the service if you want prayer and would like to talk to somebody. Um, but if you would, just, just put your hands into a posture to receive. I just want to read this verse over us. Paul writes to the, the Romans, he says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he's done. And let them be a living and holy sacrifice. There's no more blood required in an offering to the Lord. It's giving what we have, and our life is the most important and valuable thing we have. Our time, our breath, our resources, everything. So he says, give it to God as a holy, living sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. And so don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good, pleasing, and perfect. It's all about trusting God with our life and watching him reveal and lead. Father, we thank you for today. We ask that you continue to bless those who are searching for you, who are walking with you, because that is your heart's desire, is that we would come back to you so that you may be with us and bless us and lead us. So I pray that on this journey, we would take steps of trust as individuals, as families, as a church, allowing you to continue to reveal each step of the way. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your promises. We thank you for your goodness. And it's the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, the church says, amen. Y'all have a blessed week.